of thing. And so, all right, praise the Lord. That's a problem. No, that was good. That was a blessing. Pastor, thank you for the privilege and um, love to preach. Grab your Bibles, turn to the book of 3 John. Keep in your seats, though. This is not the message at all whatsoever. Not the message, but I want you to see something. Um, Ryan, what color is snow? White. Everybody agree with that? That, that's true, okay? They just sang a song that says, wash me so that I basically can be whiter than snow. So how are you whiter than white? If you know anything about snow, every snowflake, everyone ever created by Almighty God, not Mother Nature, Almighty God, every snowflake is individual. It's like a fingerprint. Every single one. But at the core of every snowflake is a piece of dust. As white as snow is, the core of it is dirt. And the Word of God says he'll make us whiter than snow. It's pretty awesome. Not the message. Neither is Third John. So I want to give this to you as well. This is all free. It's all free. It's good stuff. I'm not charging yet. I'm going to start charging soon, though. But no, I'm just kidding. Third John. I just want to share with you our theme for our church, and I'm learning it. I don't have it all worded out yet, and we have three Sundays that we call Vision Sunday this year. So we had Vision Sunday Part 1, next Sunday's Part 2, and then the following Sunday's Part 3, and then we'll be roughly into February, and we'll start preaching through the theme. And our theme verses are 3 John. Verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 says, Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and the strangers. Verse 6 says, Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. And so verse 5 has three words I want to bring up real quick. This is not the message. I'm just getting you warmed up and getting myself warmed up. And don't we all want to be warmed up? <laughs> it's cold in here. Verse 5 says, beloved, the word also brethren and strangers. So I told our church a couple Sundays ago, our church is the beloved, solid rock. For example, cornerstone would be the brethren. I'm not a member here, but you are brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. 
but I'm a member of the beloved church, Solid Rock. You guys are the brethren. The strangers is everyone else who's not saved. Had a couple visitors, I believe, this morning. Reach out to them. Pray for them. Ask God, the Holy Spirit, to bring them back. Because we don't want them to be strangers. We want them, Cornerstone, to be part of the beloved. For Solid Rock, again, they would be brethren. Verse 6 says, Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. So our desire this year at Solid Rock and for the rest of our existence is to help the beloved, the church itself, Solid Rock, brethren, which would be people like Cornerstone Baptist Church, and strangers move forward on their journey. So how do we do that? Well, it takes time, talent, treasure, and temple. It takes money and manpower. And so our church wants to help bring Cornerstone a little bit further on her journey. And so our church is giving your church, just to be a part of it, $1,000 from our church. That for us is a lot. I don't think anyone has been in our church. That's a lot. So how do we do that? Well, we do it by faith. If it's not a faith, it's sin. And so I have the privilege of just delivering the mail. But the reality is we really want to help bring Cornerstone just a little bit more forward on her journey. It's not our church. It's not even beloved to us. You're just brothers. You're just sisters. You're just the brethren. You're not strangers, so we don't mind throwing the Lord the money. But we just want to bring you a a little bit. When I look around, it's a very little bit on its journey. But that's what we want to do at Solid Rock. It starts with a beloved. We've got to take care of our own. But we're part of the family of God. Brethren in Christ. And there's a whole bunch of people that you guys are going to get to reach. Strangers that you're going to get to reach. Because I can come in here and just, ooh, it's a little cold. But I'm born again. I have no problem sitting in here. But a stranger might think, you know, maybe when they're done, I'll come back. But when it gets done, they won't even know. And if we could just have a small part in that. And just help. I mean a small part. Half a gallon of paint. Praise God. I'll come in here and go, that little section? Yeah, we did that. (laughs) Just a little forward on your journey. That's not the message. I just wanted to deliver the mail. I'm going to have my wife come up and sing Amazing Grace. But she's not singing it for you. She's singing it to the Lord. You just happen to be in the room. And so let it speak to you. And just think about the Lord. That's going to be fixed. We're going to, that's our $1,000 right there. We, it just cost us just like that now. But let, let this song, come on up, babe. Let this song speak to the Lord, but you're here. Enjoy it. Don't listen to her. Don't look at her. Just think about you and the Lord and how amazing his grace is. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers. Yeah. 
toils and snares. I have already come, tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home when we shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun amazing Thank the Lord. Amen. Grab your Bibles. Turn to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18. Thank you again, Pastor and, and Ryan. Thank you. Uh, Ryan's supposed to be up here. Brother Ryan's supposed to be up here tonight. And um, I'm in his stead. Thank you for sharing. Jeremiah 18. My heart's desire tonight is, is to be, and I mean this, to be short and just encouraging. And so um, I hope that's what, what happens. Jeremiah chapter 18. The Bible says this in Jeremiah 18 verse 1. The word, which we learned about in Sunday school, if you... Don't come to Sunday school. Let me just encourage you, come to Sunday school. Amen. This morning was a huge blessing. And uh, Sunday school is completely different than the 11 o'clock hour. It's completely different. And it's completely different than the 6 o'clock hour. And it's completely different than Wednesday night. And so every service is different. Every meal is different, even if it's the same text. The pizza just tastes different sometimes. And so I would encourage you to be faithful to the house of God. And I appreciate this Sunday school this morning. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise, Jeremiah, and go down to the potter's house. And there at the potter's house, I will cause thee, Jeremiah, to hear my, the Lord, my words. So what does Jeremiah do? Verse 3. Then I, Jeremiah, went down to the potter's house. Somebody tell me real quick, why did Jeremiah go to the potter's house? The Lord, the Lord told him. So why do you disobey? Not the message. Let me keep going. <laughs> then I went down to the potter's house because the Lord told him to. And behold, he, the potter, wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of what? Clay was what? Marred in the hand of the potter. So he, the potter, made it, the vessel that is marred of clay, made of clay and marred, he made it again another vessel. As seemed good to the who? Potter to make it. Up to verse 4, how many times has the Lord spoken to Jeremiah the weeping prophet? One time. He told him, Jeremiah, go to the potter's house. Jeremiah says, yes, sir. Goes to the potter's house. The Lord did not speak when he got there right away. So while Jeremiah is waiting, he's just sitting there, and what catches his eye is the potter. And the potter is rotting a work on the wheel. And while he's fashioning this work, I don't understand it all, but the vessel that he had in his hand was marred. 
was chipped, was broken, was cracked, was messed up. And the potter looked at it and thought, you know what, I can do something with this. And so he begins to remake it again into a different vessel, same clay, just a different vessel as what pleased the potter. And Jeremiah watched all this. And the Lord isn't saying a word. Jeremiah is just being obedient and silent. But he's watching. Do you think the Lord was busy? Is that, was, was the Lord late to this appointment? Is he ever late? Somebody said, has it ever occurred to you that nothing occurs to God? He didn't wake up and say, oh no, was this the day that was supposed to happen? We sing songs like, I know God makes no mistakes. But do we believe that? Somebody said we do the most lying when we're in church singing the hymn. All to Jesus I surrender. We sing it, but do we mean it? Intellectually, we all pass the test. We're the Sunday night crowd. We're doing great. But application is tough. And Jeremiah, up to this verse, is standing watching the potter take a marred vessel Remake it as seemeth good to the potter. And then we see the Lord speak again in verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord. Behold, as the what? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. I don't know how intimately he said that, but he started out. I mean, you know, when you look at someone you love and you just you have that message and you say their name and then you say that thing that you really want to say and then you say their name at the end, how intimate that is. Look again at verse six. <clears throat> verse six says this, O house of Israel. Can I do with you as this potter? How did the Lord say that? In my opinion, he wasn't angry. As much love as a heavenly father would have for his children. Oh, house of Israel. Can I do with you as this potter? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand. Oh, house of Israel. God is saying, I have you, and if you'll let me, I'll remake you. You're marred. You sinned. You blew it. But I'm still God. I'm still faithful and true. We learned that in Sunday school. I'm still just. I'm still holy. 1 John 1, 9 says for us, the church, if ye confess our sins, he is faithful and just. So when we're not faithful and we're unjust, God sits on his throne and says, come on home, son. I'll remake you. When I lived outside of Chicago for a couple of years, we would go door knocking. And as we go door knocking, it's weird. All over the place, there were planters in different people's houses. Planters of just plants and different things. But the planters were old tires. And then I got thinking about the fact that God sometimes designed us to be on a vehicle. And then we blow it. Or sometimes we have a blowout and it wasn't our fault. And no matter what, if it's our fault or just life, God says, I can fix that. Right. And I can remake that. Mm -hmm. Don't you know you're in my hand? And I got thinking about all the uses of a tire outside of a car. <laughs> I got thinking about a tire swing. How many of you have ever written on a tire swing? My hand's down, I haven't. I'm from the hood, man, we have tire swings. <laughs> The tires can be used for all sorts of stuff. Hey, did you know you could even retread a tire? God looks at you, and he doesn't see the mess that you think you are. He sees the potential and the masterpiece that he wants you to be. And he says, oh, AJ, don't you know I can remake you? Yeah, but I blew it. I know, I see you're marred, but you're in my hand. Now, if you're marred over there, we got a problem. 
But when you're here, oh, I can do something with that. So now go to our text. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 64. Just one verse. Believe it or not, I'm almost done. The word almost is not able to be measured. Isaiah 64. Don't get excited back there now. Church, I just want you to experience a hug. God loves you. I tell people three things everywhere we preach. God loves you, God wants to use you, and God has a specific plan for your life. Fact. He loves you. Yeah, but you don't know about, yeah, he does, and he loves you. Do you understand that the death of Jesus Christ was not plan B? Before there was an Adam, before the foundation of the world, plan A was for Almighty God to be the greatest giver ever and give his only begotten son for you and for me. He loves you. He wants to use you. You might say, how, how, how? Just surrender to the fact that he wants to use you. And at some point, he'll explain to you the specific plan he has for your life. But it starts with the fact that he loves you. He wants to use you and he has a specific plan for your life. So just one verse and I'll be done. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. The text is awesome, just 12 verses. But we're only going to look at verse 8 this evening. Psalm 64, verse 8 says this. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay and thou art potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Let's just dissect this really quick. Number one, you're going to see right now the present. The present. Look at verse number eight again. But, what is that next word? But. Now, so no matter what age or stage of life you are in right now, we're talking about right now. Right now, like present. My dad, one of my dad's favorite things he used to say when we were growing up is with regards to Christmas, the greatest present for Christmas is the presence of Jesus Christ. The greatest present is his presence. And so right now we're in the present. We're in the now. So what does God have for us right now? We'll keep reading. Number one, the present. Number two, the passion. But now, O Lord, just think about the Lord. The Lord should be why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. I, it's a short verse, and I, I really don't want to be labored tonight, but I would like a little bit of participation here. In our church, we have testimonies very often. But there's two kinds in our church. We have regular testimonies where people get up and testify. And then what we, we have what I call popcorn testimonies, which are just one word. And I tell them it's just one word. Now, there's always somebody who has three. They can't help it. But just one word testimony of how good the Lord is. So just let's start them out. Popcorn. In a popcorn, you put it in the microwave and you watch it and you wait. And it takes forever. Not really, but it feels like it. And then they start popping. So let's start popping. Just one word testimonies. You can go more than once, but you can't go back to back. Ready? Sustainer. Sustainer. Provider. Provider. Gracious. Merciful. Patient, awesome. I love that one because the first three letters of awesome are A-W-E. And if you study the word awe, it'll help you understand how awesome God is and how we should be in awe of him. We're talking about the Lord. But now, oh Lord, right now, he's awesome. What else? I just ruined the popcorn. I just burnt that one. Who else? Healer. Healer. Father. Father. Provider. Redeemer. Redeemer. I want to preach all of his. Redeemer. Faithful. Forgiving. Just. Savior. Savior. Loving. understanding he's touched 
with the feelings of our infirmity. He's been exactly where you are, just not with the sin part. The song says, does Jesus care? Wouldn't it have been horrible if it didn't have a chorus, Ryan? You're up here leading it. Does Jesus care? And then you walk away. Wouldn't it be a horrible song? But the chorus says, oh, yes. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. Yeah, yeah he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities right now. But now, O oh Lord, but now, O oh Lord, let's move on with the verse. But now, O oh Lord, notice number three, <clears throat> not just the present, but now the passion. O oh Lord, he's why we do what we do. But number three, the protection, the protection. But now, O oh Lord, thou art our father. Somebody said father tonight, but I think of the cross when he said Abba. And it's almost awkward, but there's times where I tell him, you're literally Abba, you're daddy. There's times that you allow me, almighty God, to sit on your lap and just pour myself out on you. I have friends, I thank God for them. I have family, I thank God for most of them. Just kidding. But you're my father. And he never sleeps. He never slumbers. And I could sit, if you will, on his lap. And I could say, Abba. Right now. Right now. I've been married for 23 years, and there's been times that I wanted to pour my heart out to my wife. But I couldn't, and I shouldn't. There's just certain, I just shouldn't. There's things in the pastorate, there's things just going on that I just, I, I shouldn't. But God says, casting all your care upon him for he cares for me it's not that my wife doesn't care but God says oh she cares but I care and I can handle it there's a reason she's called the weaker vessel doesn't call her a weak vessel we're all weak vessels we all get marred she just happens to be the weaker vessel and God looks at me and says, you're weak too, so cast it on me, for I care for you. Do we understand why we even come to church? Don't get me wrong. There's times where the preacher must get up, the pastor must get up and shepherd. And if you know the story, if you know what I mean by this, and break your leg at times. If you don't know what I mean by that, come talk to me after and I'll make it make sense. But for those of us who understand the shepherd and the sheep... There's times where he's got to get up and break your leg and you think he hates me. And if you don't, do you understand that? Or do I need to go into that real fast? Okay, good. Because I don't want you, if you're confused, please don't leave with that. To be like, wow, he just said the pastor should break my leg. Let me explain it, okay, before you go. But for those of us who understand, there's times where the pastor has to clean house. I said to our church a few weeks ago when, when actually uh, Sherry was counseling a young lady. And I, and I told her, babe, tell her this. There's a thin line between, I know the last part, do you remember? There's a thin line between flipping over tables and not flipping over tables. There's another part, I cannot remember it right now, it just escaped my mind. But there's times where Jesus, you lean in on him, and there's times where you gotta flip tables. And if you know that story, I hope you do, that's in the Bible. And Jesus looked at, at those people and said, my house shall not be a den of thieves, but should be a house of prayer. That's right. There's a thin line between turning the other cheek and flipping over tables. And sometimes pastor has to flip over tables and clean house. And that's hard. The Bible says reprove, rebuke, exhort. All we want is exhorting. But that's not all we need. Yeah. Proverbs 11 one says a false balance is abomination to the Lord. Right. A false balance. Exhort. Our pastor, all he does is exhort us. Well, then you don't have a good pastor. There's got to be times where a pastor says, church, exhort, reprove, rebuke. It's all got to be there. That's why coming to every service is so important. 
If you only come to one service a week, it just happens to be the sermon that he only rebukes. And you're like, man, that guy's always angry. And you have no idea that in Sunday school, all he does is hug people. But every Sunday night, it's like he's so mad. Well, come on Wednesday and see how he is. He had to come faithfully. No, no, I'm talking to the Sunday night crowd, so move on, preacher. Okay, I will. So you've got the present, but now the passion, O Lord, the protection. Thou art our Father. But how about number four, the position? The position, but now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the what? We're the clay. We're the clay. I'm going to say more about this at the end. So let's move on to the end of the verse, number five, the process. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. I mentioned earlier, sometimes we do the most lying when we're in church. We sing songs like, have thine own way, Lord. Or we'll sing songs like, be still my soul. Apply those songs. There's a lot of doctrine in there. We need them. So I'd like to leave you with the word clay, C-L-A-Y. And I'm just going to throw this at you and pass the baton back to pastor. The word is clay. No matter what you're going through in life, let her see. Calm down. Just calm down. Biblically, it's said this way. Be still and know that I am God. Just calm down. Just breathe. There's a man in my church. One of his favorite songs is leaning on the everlasting arm. Just lean in. I hate to bring up a cartoon. How about I step over here? In this cartoon, there's two sisters who learn from their mom. I can't believe I'm bringing this up and preaching. And the mom told the little girls to scooch in, get close. And mom passed away, and the two girls are there. And the older sister or the younger sister, doesn't matter, looks at the older sister and says, come on, scooch in. There's times we have to scooch in. We just lean in on the Lord. It doesn't matter what's going on. Just shh, calm down. You ever been mad and then caught yourself being mad and then you got more mad because you got mad? Is that just me? Yeah. I had a preacher friend that said he used to get angry all the time. I didn't know him in those days. He's one of the kindest men I've ever met. But he said, I used to get mad. I used to get mad at the drop of a hat. And I'd take my hat off and drop it on purpose just to get mad. I'm like, wow. He's just mad. But he calmed down. He leaned in. When I met him, I thought, there's no way you used to be angry. There's just no way. That's a choice. We heard it this morning. Rejoicing is a choice. Calm down. I, the situation's bad. I know. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. By the way, the only way to be in a shadow is to be close to that thing, right? Yes. Psalm 91.1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. How do you make it through the shadow of the valley of death? You stay in the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. He's walking with you through it. So calm down. I'm not excusing the storm. The valley is still there. But realize who's walking with you. You're clay. He's the potter. You're marred. He's remaking you. So letter L, letter C, calm down. Letter L, lay down. It's one thing to calm down. Are you calm? I'm calm. <laughs> Stop lying. Two, if you are calm, prove it by just laying down. Romans 12 says it this way. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which, by the way, is just your reasonable service. You know, the hardest thing about being a living sacrifice is that as soon, let's say it's a burnt offering, as soon as it gets hot, what do you want to do? You want to jump off. As soon as the knife is raised, you want to get out of there. 
because you're a living sacrifice. But I want to encourage you with regards to the potter and the clay. He's the potter, we're the clay. Stay on the wheel. Just lay down. Let him have his way with thee. Don't we sing that? Let him have his way. Have thine own way, Lord. You sang it for years, and then you found yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, and now you're doubting. Don't do that. Lay down. Lay down. He is the great physician. Just trust him. That's what we sing. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. You're the just clay. But as long as you're in his hand, lay down. Stay on the wheel. Letter A. While you're laying there, calm, trusting. I tell our church all the time, the whole Christian life can be summed up in three words. Trust and obey. It's easy to obey when we understand. The trash is full. AJ, yes, Lord, take out the trash. Makes sense. It's full. Obey. The trash can's empty. AJ, take out the trash. Oh, uh, Lord, it's... It yeah. Shh. Just trust me. It's not about the trash. It's about trusting me. Yeah, but there's no reason. I don't want to... Wait. Shh. We're the clay. If the potter says, take out the trash, don't even look. Just take it out. Acknowledge. What do you mean by acknowledge? Look at the verse again. But now, O Lord. What are those next two words? But now, O Lord. Verse 8 of Isaiah 64. But now, O Lord. What are the next two words? But now, O Lord. Thou art our Father. It's not about you. We got to preach camp this summer, a couple different camps, and uh, one of the camps, the theme of the camp, uh, the director, uh, the theme was, uh, it's not about you. It's not about you. Our whole life is not even about us. We're just to deflect. To God be the glory. It's not about you. It's literally all about him. That's it. And if we understand that we're the clay and he's the potter, I mean, we said, mold me and make me after my will. That might be how we live. But the song says, after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded and still. I was talking to a pastor earlier, and I, I said, you know, sometimes we're just so Martha. We're cumbered about, we're busy, and we've neglected Mary, who Jesus said she chose the needful part. And we can't just be Mary and sit there and do nothing. We can't be Martha and just serve, serve, serve. We've got to be in balance. And so tonight, to the best of my ability, I'm just trying to encourage you to just stay on the wheel. Just be the clay. Just trust and obey. Calm down, lay down, acknowledge, and we've already mentioned letter Y is yield. Yield. My favorite psalm, at least for tonight, because you know how it is. Next week it'll be another one. But it's Psalm 73. Can I just share with you Psalm 73 and then I'm done. Psalm 73 is 28 verses, so we're not going to read them all. But just share with you as I close. And I, Oh, let me tell you this. I, I wanted to preach John 13 when pastor asked me to. You know what John 13 is all about? It's foot washing. And I wanted to encourage you two to let everybody wash your feet. Why? Because your whole life, has been washing people's feet. But somebody has to receive it. That, your whole life is just wash feet, wash feet, wash feet. But tonight, 
Just let everybody wash their feet. The Bible says it's more blessed to what than to what? It's more blessed to than to. But can you give if there's no one there to receive? This couple up here, they're givers. Everyone in here knows that. You're in a season of needing to receive. I wanted to preach that. I wasn't going to wash your feet, though. <laughs> but I love you guys. We love you guys. And we can't even help them. We can't even help Jennings. We definitely can't help Pastor. <laughs> but Jesus can. And the greatest thing we can do for one another in fact, Jesus said, well, the wash of your feet. You probably wonder why. This is AJV here. You probably wonder why I did that, disciples. And they're like, yeah, why are you washing our feet? In fact, Peter's like, no, not so, Lord. And he says, this is why. Because by this shall all men know, all strangers know, that ye are my disciples. If ye have love one toward another. They love you, church. And you know that. And you love them but you're in a season of just sit down. Just be loved. Just be loved on. Oh, it's awkward. I know why. Because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Everybody would rather be on the giving side. But just take it in. From the heart of a friend, let us wash your feet. Just where you're at right now. Then I wanted to preach Psalm 73. Psalm 73 is a song leader wrote Psalm 73, Asaph. Song leader, Ryan. He sat down in verse 1, he says, Truly God is good to Israel, even as such as are of a clean heart. You know what he said? God is so good. Song leader. Then he said, let me give you my testimony, verse 2. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the foolish. When I saw the, what does he say? When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no bands in their death. For, and he goes on and on and on. And then he talks about this. Everything changed in verse 17. Yeah. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, the presence of God. Then understood I therein. You know what he said? I, when I got into God's presence, I realized I'm the clay. You're the potter. This is the best the world has it. Their end is hell. They're strangers. That didn't make him happy. That broke his heart. And this is what he said, and I'm going to finish with this verse, otherwise I will go for another seven hours. Psalm 73, verse 28. Listen, church. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I've put my trust in the Lord God. Why? That I might declare all thy works. God has either marred you or allowed you to be marred. But you have a free will. You can get off the will or you could stay in his hand. And when he remakes you, there's a purpose for the marring and the remaking so that you may declare all his works. How many people can you reach when everything is just roses with no thorns? How many people can you reach? They don't even want to talk to you because you don't understand, they say. That's why God says, no, you can cast all your care upon my son, upon me, because I've been touched with the feelings of your... There's nothing you could tell me that God's like, ooh, I don't know how to handle this one. Holy Spirit, what do you think? No, Jesus? No, oh man, we're in trouble. There's nothing you're going through that God is shocked by. Right. Nothing. And there's nothing you're going through that doesn't have a purpose. God loves you. He wants to use you. And he has a specific plan for your life. So stay on the wheel. Let him make you. Trust and obey. Say, Pastor, it hurts. I know. I'm not standing up here as if I haven't been marred. It's because I've been forgiven much that I want to love much. 
Because I can't believe that he loves me. I can't believe it. My favorite song is God is so good. Because he's so good to me. But he's good to me for a purpose. Pastor, I love you. I love you both. I love your kids. And God does all things well. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, our timing and your timing is so far apart. But you taught us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Help us to just take the next step to trust in you with all our heart, to lean not into our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge you. And you shall direct our paths. Help us not to be wise in our own eyes. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I feel like the Holy Spirit just popped this in my mind. I want to share this with you, but